Good morning and welcome to another Parker Adams Boat Sales video walkthrough. Now I'm in Port Solent today and just behind me um, is a very special sailing boat. Um, this boat is a Colvick 48. Now what this boat, what makes this boat really very very unique is the fact that this boat um, was actually first laid up, the hull was laid in 1998. Um, it had various owners uh, whilst it was waiting to be fitted out and then finally got fitted out um, around the 2000 2018 and launched in 2019 so this boat is absolutely sparkling like brand new um, it's got a hull number which is 2018 so it was re-registered uh, in 2018 and the boat finally went afloat in 2019 um, what I would say about this boat is that if you're considering buying um, a, a boat which may be 10 15 years old um, you should really really consider looking over this boat um, the boat is presented in as new condition um, but represents presents an enormous saving on a boat of this size and a boat of this caliber um, that would be actually new. So just a reminder here, it's a 1998 hull, but the whole fit out was done on this boat um, around 2018 and then finally launched in 2019. Um, the attention to detail, the quality on board this boat really is absolutely exceptional and I'm really excited to be able to show you this boat. Um, this walkthrough tour is going to be done by both myself and Jonathan Parker. Uh, Jonathan is already on board, we're getting lots of documentation ready so what we're going to do is give you a walkthrough tour of the boat but also talk to you a bit about the history of this boat i think it's really important to get across on a boat like this uh, just how this boat has come to be in 1998 hull but then finished in 2018 19 um, who's worked on the boat and see the quality and the standard of the fit out on this boat so what we're going to do now is get aboard um, and start showing you the rest of the boat so thanks again for watching uh, please do like and subscribe to our youtube channel um, and let's crack on with the video many thanks Okay, so we thought we'd start off at the bow of the boat. As you can see behind me is Jonathan Parker. Hello there. Um, so we're gonna start the bow and what better place to start than the anchor. Yes. So Jonathan, let's talk a little bit about this anchor. Okay, well the anchor, if we have a look down here, we can see it's a large Delta stainless steel anchor. It looks beautiful actually, but it's actually two bow rollers. So you can have the opportunity to have a second anchor on here as well if you wish. Um, although this one is large enough um, to um, cope obviously with, with most conditions. Just as I'll do a scale look, I've got a size 10 foot, it's a huge one. It's also on a swivel pin. And so it should self right as it comes back up onto the roller. And we can see um, a really nice size gauge of chain um, going down into the chain locker and foot controls as well, which as we can see work beautifully. Uh, really nice and um, and it is just still in beautiful condition all being stainless steel obviously apart from the chain it just doesn't really age um, through the season at all really nice um, up on the front here as well there's a there's a perch here so you can actually um, get up on here and physically see the anchor going down so when you've got lovely crystal clear water and when you're trying to guide the anchor back up um, we can have a look over the, over the front and have a really good view um, we're also fitted on here with the furl, the furling head sail, and it's a furl X 400 S. Um, now, part of the um, the beauty of this Colvic is that all this and all the rigging was all fitted out um, only in the last couple of years. Um, so all of this, even though the hull was laid up in '98, all the rigging was done only in the last couple of years. Um, so let's carry on. And just actually while we're up here, I just draw attention to the, I guess it's the attention to detail and the way that all the teak looks. I love the fact that these these really big chunky stainless steel cleats are lifted up on a, on a custom uh, custom piece of wood there. So they're not just bolted straight through the deck, they're also on an additional piece of wood. Um, and then all of the woodwork all the way around, it's all just really, really nicely finished. Uh, nice scallops here on the teak. Um, we're talking about the teak, the teak looks like it's been treated um, probably with Semco, which is why it's starting to silver in some places, um, but also it's got um, probably a, a, a treatment with the natural colour um, Semco, which gives it this sli slightly patchy feel um, as the teak is, is yellowing and and. But isn't it, but isn't it beautiful? Silvering. I mean, look yeah. how much space there is though. I mean, the side decks are huge, the coach roof is lovely, and all the teak is everywhere and it's just lovely and you know it's massive this area is huge and real good access real safe feel up here as well 
um, and uh, yeah, it's just lovely. We've got um, curtains, out, outer covers for the windows down below, as we can see, and this is all the way around to give you a nice um, uh, bit of privacy, but also protects the windows over the winter period. Um, and obviously you've got this huge bugger of a mark. Is that a technical term, Jonathan? A bugger of a yeah, mark? Yeah, I have to bleep that one out. <laughs> but, uh, but as we can see, there's radar fitted, there's a deck light fitted, wind instruments, and all of this instrumentation was done in 2019. So all of this was done then. Again, just, just talking about the teak work again, you can just see it's really nice the way the teak, teak is all channeled out around here. Uh, just it's a really, really quality feeling boat. The boat feels, even up on the hard, she feels very heavy. She feels a very big, solid, capable boat. A boat that you could comfortably do, you know, extended blue water cruising with. These covers look brand new as well. So the main sail cover, all done by Texo. Um, they look like they've just come out of the factory. There's no corrosion to the zips. It just looks brand new. And as well as the spray cover as well, the spray hood, again, is in really nice condition. Probably just showing a little bit of end of the season um, grubbiness to it, but easily cleaned off. Okay, so let's work our way back. Actually, just uh, drawing attention, really nice feature. I've noticed that um, installed here where you've got, again, these big chunky cleats, um, you've also got um, metal protectors um, so that the wood doesn't get chafed when you have your spring lines on. Just little touches like that, I think are really, really nice to see that it this boat even, has been built and thought out really nicely. even them fitted in different places all the way along. They haven't just done it by the cleats, they've done it all the way along. So when you've got spring lines on, um, and fenders and then it protects from rubbing on the fenders as well so the kind of position just where you put fenders I guess I yeah. do well thought out and of course there's an opening as well so we can allow access we won't do it now because you know because of health and safety <laughs> um, but you can open this up so your side access is very easy and again there's a there's a step there to come on in um, There's some fairly large winches there, Jonathan. Look at the size of those. Yeah, look at that. I was you're looking at those, I'm referring to these. Yeah, I'm seeing ones that big. <laughs> Um, um, the the yeah. whole the winch system here they're really nice big half and winches heavy duty yeah, uh, that one says a six, 60 to 6 .2, um, and, and the other one is slightly smaller is a 56.2 um, so really big heavy duty hark and winches there um, and of course remembering it's a half cabin boat so we've yeah. got another coach roof over the top here um, and again with um, covers over the hatches as well on the top that's really nice. Again, just looking back here, I always like to have this view of a boat where you, you stand right at the rear and look forward. There's a substantial boat in front of you here, and you can really see the width of those side decks here as well. So let's have a look at the cockpit. So what does the cockpit hold in store for us? We also should just mention there is some water um, which is um, just sitting here. Um, the way that they've laid the boat up here at Port Stone is the boat is pretty nose heavy. So we are expecting that when, uh, sorry, bow up in the air. So I'm expecting that once the boat is back in the water, um, you won't have puddles of water um, here, but we're gonna get rid of this here um, a bit later on today. So we'll remove that from there so it dries out nicely. In terms of instrumentation, as Jonathan said, 2019, um, all of this Raymarine equipment was fitted. So what have we, what have we got here, Jonathan? What's on the, what's on the binnacle? Um, well, we've got a small Raymarine plotter here, but it's backed up with this hybrid touch system as well. Um, and um, as you can see on the screen, it does actually have AIS as well. So it's a transceiver, so it does transmit as well as receive AIS. Um, we also have newly fitted autopilot, and also we've got a, a Raymarine, I think they're an I-70, and um, this is actually showing the wind instrument at the moment. So we're showing the direction and the speed, but we can program this to show lots of different things, including AIS targets, um, including your course over ground and direction. Um, you can configure this to show pretty much whatever, you, whatever you'd most like to see at the time. And you can configure each, each screen to suit yourself and then go through the different options on that. Um, on here as well, um, we also have um, this radar fitted as well. Um, let me show that operating. 
um, as well as it's had fitted a sonar as well. So it's not just depth, it's actual sonar as well. Obviously not seeing much because I don't think there's any fish swimming under the boat since would, we're out the water. I would be concerned if there were. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, but but all together, I think it's got everything you'd want. Yeah. I, I can't think, is there anything else you'd have on there? No, I think that's everything you need. And also oh, um, VHF, access yes. to VHF, yeah, yeah, just on the side there. There's a remote VHF on the side as well. And, um, and it does have the all important DSC function as well. But again, this was new when all this system was fitted um, back in um, 2019 and the autopilot was fitted 2020. And something else just to mention here, you probably noticed this um, funky design on the wheel. Uh, I actually love these designs. I first noticed this design at, um, at some of the boat shows a few years ago. Brilliant design just to add to that uh, ease to walk around the cockpit space. So the wheel obviously flicks out to ins ensure a full size wheel, but when you're not at sea, uh, you can just fold the wheel in. And in fact, Jonathan and I were very taken by these little elastic bungees yeah. earlier, just well, show just you how thought, these work. Well, I just thought it was a bungee that he put round, but that once you undo it, they actually retract back into the Lumar handle. Clever as that. And then I think I've not done this yet. Yeah, but that's it. Yeah. And, that slide and then you just roll it on and you're away. And then you're back into your full sized oh. wheel. Brilliant. It's such a clever, simple design that you end up with a very, you know, a good, large, functional wheel, but it doesn't take up loads and loads of space yeah. um, in the cockpit for moving around. Really nice feature there. It's really smart. And of course, you can still lock it off like you normally would as well. Um, so Yanmar engine. So you can see here you've got the Yanmar instrumentation panel. Um, now the engine on this boat, um, it is a 1998 engine. So the engine um, was br brand new when the hull was laid up, um, but that engine was obviously totally unused until 2019. Um, and it's currently showing 61 hours um, on the clock. So very, very little use out of what is a 1998 engine. Um, but interesting enough when talking uh, to people recently, um, actually if people want wanted to do blue water cruising and um, the idea of having a slightly older engine is actually a really good thing because the older engines are much more mechanically minded rather than being run by computers so if you are taking this out to sea doing blue water cruising you've got a much more simple engine that powers this boat which can be repaired much more easily at sea than some of these new much more computer generated engines if you had a view on that as well Jonathan yeah I think you're right I think with, with yachts especially your engine is your backup and with modern engines and modern systems now everyone seems to have gone electronic and the problem is once you start introducing something else above your basic mechanics then you're adding something else that can go wrong um, but this has got the um, the Yanmar 7 um, what is it it's a Yanmar 7 LE HTE um, um, four-cylinder diesel engine. I'd, I'd have been more impressed if you'd remembered those figures, John. No, Did you have to refer to that? No, no of course not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, but it's a 127 horsepower engine, so it's a powerful engine. It's more than you'd ever need on something like this. Um, but I just love these analog gauges. Um, so we've got analog rev counter. We've also got um, oil pressure, temperature, and the hour meter. And it's only showing 61 hours at the minute. Um, but a very simple system and a very reliable system. Um, once you start introducing um, electronics, digital displays, um, electronic throttle controls, which you can get now on most modern yachts, um, yes, they feel nicer to use, they feel a bit smoother, a bit lighter, but you still have to have this mechanical um, connection further down onto the engine in a lot of cases. So you're still using mechanical parts, but now you're adding electronics to it. So keeping everything simple equals reliability. And that's one of the benefits of this. It may be um, the, the engine is 20 years old, but it's only done 60 hours. And of course it's been kept nice the last 20 years. It hasn't just been left. It's been left, you know, probably in a um, fitted out in a you know warm in a warm warehouse somewhere. warehouse somewhere where it's been looked after and obviously um, um, mothballed for that time but it's been proven to be working really nice we'll have a look in the engine bay in a bit anyway okay so let's just finish up in um, in the cockpit space here uh, walking forward uh, you can see um, all the controls lead back into the cockpit, which makes this boat very, very easy to um, to handle short-handed. I think this would be, despite its size, this would be a boat that you'd quite comfortably handle um, with just two people, actually. You know, obviously, the more people you've got on a boat of this size, the easier it becomes, but I would quite comfortably handle this boat with two people. Um, and this winch here um, is also electric. So you have an electric winch here, which is a really nice feature as well. Um, and of course, if you wanted to electrify any of the other winches, you could do so, um, but that's got the single, 
electric winch there and all the rest of the controls here for the other winches are nice and easy to hand um, and you've got the traveler here at the back and then your main sheet again very very easy for you to um, to handle from a, a sailing point of view from the skipper at the, at the okay. rear. So if we look here at the binnacle you've got a sc scan strut binnacle here so nice good quality uh, you've got a cockpit table there that can just be lifted out yeah, um, it's, 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 well. it's hinged and opened out um, and um, then not forgetting oh bow thruster yeah, we yeah. forgot to mention the bow thruster yeah, we forgot to mention this does have a bow thruster um, and also just on the side here you can control the windlass from the helm as well oh nice and um, so you've got a um, control there up and down and that's also an emergency off so um, if you don't want anyone to accidentally push it while you're going along push that in and then the button doesn't work at all um, and then you pop it out when you want to use it so a nice little safety feature attached to that but yeah it's not often you see the windlass control down here you also notice speakers behind you there so if you have um, the, the radio that's downstairs it's a nice fusion radio and that supplies these um, good quality Sony speakers into the cockpit area. So I think it's time to go down below. I reckon so. Um, last thing to do, there is a lovely cover that goes over all of this as well. So again brand new condition cover and it covers the whole lot once the wheels folded. Perfect right I'm just going to flip my shoes off and let's head down below. Now, just a reminder, this boat was all fully fitted out in 2019, and that is why the condition of this boat is as you see here. It is absolutely beautiful. The boat smells, obviously that's something that you can't see in a YouTube video, uh, the boat smells brand new. Uh, it's got a lovely feel to it here. Oh, the steps as well. And these steps, yeah. Like this stainless fitting. You know, look how sturdy this is. You normally just see a couple of hinges and you have to flip it up, but I really like that. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah and all got a non-slip on as well so they've all got non-slip on and uh, yeah really nice look just the stainless just feels very good very good quality very high quality absolutely so let's start off in the galley let's start in the galley area you can see it's a really nice separate self-contained galley area and probably one of the big things in this galley um John, Jonathan's looking at bilges already. I'm going for the, I'm going for the fridge. I'm going for the pretty bits. That, Are you going for so the fridge? I'm going for the fridge. So the one, one of the big things here that you can see straight away is a really proper, decent sized fridge. It always surprises me um, how on a boat, you look at sort of 50 foot boats and they still have those tiny little Dometic fridges. Um, now this particular boat has got a proper freezer, um, three, tr three drawer freezer compartment, um, and then a really big fridge unit. It's still got the plastic protection. I mean, I guess is that was all new last year as well. So all, you know, 2019, yeah. I think the fridge would have been new um, when everything else was done. So you can see brand new fridge. That's even got a small freezer compartment as well. So loads and loads of space in there. And then storage around here, it's been very well, well thought out. You've got a fire extinguisher on the side here with fire blanket. You've got another fire extinguisher just inside this cupboard here. Um, shelf, you've got a little yeah. shelf cubby Your area. Sensible place having your um, uh, 240 volt sockets here so you can have instruments here, perhaps a juicer on the top there or a blender. And then they only made a cover. They've bothered to put a shelf in there as well. Which is nice. Proper provisions. I, I talked earlier about blue water cruising. The more you look at this boat, the more you see the space, the areas that you've got provisions. But the doors um, are lovely as well, even the way they're beveled around. The way they're built with these lovely hinges is just very nice, just very good quality. So um, in terms, let's just talk about the quality of the um, the fit out actually, a lot of the woodwork um, on this boat was done um, by the team um, at um, Osmotech and also Blue Chip Marine at Hamble Point. So the fit out of this boat was actually done um, at Hamble Point in 2019. Hamble Point Marina. Uh, Hamble Point Marina, yeah. yeah down um, on the River Hamble. Of course, the, the, south the coast of the England. indeed for the international um, people watching this. Yes, you're right. So the River Hamble um, is in the middle of the south coast in the UK. Um, renowned um, people, Osmotech and also Blue Chip Marine, very very highly regarded woodwork guy, and he did a lot of the woodworking on this boat. Um, you can see just little cupboards, little space from a blue water cruising point of view. You would vittle this boat very very well. Lots of space for for everything that you need. I even love this oven. I mean, look at the. It's even got a wooden handle on it. I just love that um, but this is unusual this oven because um, so it's proper oven um, and twin hob but this is actually a diesel fired oven and hob 
So this uses not gas. There is no gas fitted on the boat. So there, no, there isn't actually a gas bottle on the boat. No, there's no gas bottle on the boat. There's no. There doesn't need to be because what would you use gas for? You'd use it for your cooker, for your cooking. But this uses the diesel heating. Um, so this uses a um, sorry the diesel tank. Um, so it just works a bit like a diesel blow heater for the fact that it has a burner in it. Um, you turn it on and then you can operate either the two burners or you can operate the oven using diesel. Really good clever way of reducing the amount of things you need on the boat including having to have a gas system on here. That's a good system. I'd, I'd not heard of that before until seeing that. It's good to see it. So spin around to here, lots more um, work surface here. So you've got a good amount of work surface um, on both of these areas here. Lots of storage, as we mentioned, in the cupboards. And a nice thing as well, uh, you've got LED lighting, which is all the way through here. But also the design of the boat is such that when you're in the galley area and you're looking out, as so you can't do it, say we've left the, um, the window protectors on, um, but you've got a perfect height here to look out and see what's going on in the marina um, or in the stunning little Aegean Bay that you might have taken the boat to in the yeah. Med. It's lovely, but don't, and, and not forgetting that if I um, figure out where the lights are, if I turn the lights off, it's still quite a good amount of light in here. Yeah. And even if we just had these side lights on, it's actually um, lovely, even with the windscreen covers on, it gives lovely mood lighting. In fact, the, the GoPro is making it look a little bit darker than perhaps it, it is normally. In fact, it's adjusted a little bit now, but there's still lots and lots of light. And as Jonathan said, once you take these um, screen protectors off, um, the light will flood in here. So we've started off um, in the galley area. Let's let's move around now and let's perhaps go back to the aft cabin, um, which is, of course, the largest cabin on the boat. Okay, yeah, 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 because everyone will want to see that. So we go down this corridor through this lovely beveled door. You're liking, the, bev you're liking the beveled wood, aren't you, Jonathan? Well, that's one thing I appreciate about this boat. It's it's just good quality fit out. It's just really nice. And there's so much wood is what you'd want on a on a boat like this. It's, it almost feels traditional, but, but very modern at the same time. Yeah. It's got that, you know, that perfect match. But, but look here, I mean, a proper island bed. And um, it's a lovely size with um, side settee. And then of course, um, the usual um, amount of really good space here, so, so, like so, I normally say. So, so, so if people haven't been watching our videos, Jonathan, how, how tall are you, Jonathan? I'm six foot, ah, if you, you hadn't have guessed already. <laughs> and you can see that very happily um, sleep on here. I'm not normally my coat, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, very good. Uh, reading lights, of course, and even a little window at the back. So you want some fresh air in the morning. Actually, I love the window at the back. I think that's really nice. So often on a boat, you look sideways, but on this boat, you can look to the back as well. So it's lovely here. You've got the steps up. Again, looking at the quality of this wood, the quality of the workmanship. Um, you've got beveled edge uh, mirror here, all of these doors, um, lots and lots of a uh, you know, dressing table here. Um, this lovely dressing table here, and then a lift out. So to keep all your your ablutions and cosmetics and things um more draw uh, sorry shelf space here tell you something that's really nice i've noticed on my boat i missed this 240 volt um socket just by the bed so often you want to charge your phone or something at, when yeah, you're in bed it's to this side as well Two on there. so it's you char charge your phone or something when you're in bed and you, you you can't do it so it's nice to see that's been thought out as well a secret hidden cupboard what's that access to the main switch in there main strip switch again they bothered just to make it nice um but um this though this isn't a wardrobe it may look like it because look it's only a dinky door look. you think we're going into the land of oz but no we're going into the land of showering because <laughs> look it's actually a ensuite and the boards are in here again um i'm six foot so i can fit in here lights in here and look at the size of this shower. It's a sit down um, shower as well. So you can sit down in here and have a lovely shower. Um, I suggest that probably a shower curtain might be advantageous. Yep. Maybe as as you could use it as a wet room. It is set up with that because it is actually sealed properly all the way around. Um, but, um, but obviously a nice overhead, the operation controls are there. And there's a lovely mirror on here which makes the whole room seem so much bigger. The room feels massive, there's a lot of mirror space in here. I mean it is a good size, I mean look we've got this massive worktop on here with the sink and we've got this lovely um, um, soap dispenser and something to put your other bits and pieces, storage and two lots of storage again under there and look at that, doubles 
as the toilet. Yeah, that's clever. Toilet roll holder. See, something I also like, I like this work, uh, well, I say work surface, I like this and the way that the sink is there, it's all moulded in, so that's all a custom, a custom fit out there, which is really, really nice. And you've got more cupboard space um, at the back here. I think your, your phone's ringing, Jonathan. Is it me? It is you. Duncan Wells. Hello, Duncan. Sorry, sorry, Duncan Wells for for, for for doing that. He's used to doing a lot of filming, Duncan. <laughs> He'll understand. Um, okay, that's so excellent. That's really nice. So let's just have a, another quick look around this room here. A very, very good size room here. Lovely big island bed in this fantastic aft cabin. So as we work our way back through the boat now. Um, draw uh, locker space throughout there's another uh, window with light streaming here and then that brings you to the navigation station um i'll get jonathan to sit down there and tell me what you're looking at jonathan so when you when yeah. you sat at the, at the chart table doing your charts for your long distance so journey this is the concentration area so not only did we show you all the plotters and everything up upstairs um up at the helm there's actually you've got um, um repeat displays down here so we've got an, another i70 here which again is showing your wind speed and direction and we can flick through exactly the same as above um, i've actually got the radar on as you can see here um, and this does all the same operation as the hybrid touch so if you flip back, to, flip back to radar for a second there and um, we're in port solent marina and actually if you press the radar so if you press that you can actually see quite clearly the shape of Port Solent um, there on the radar. So it's um, it's a good system there. But is that a radar? I'm thinking that actually where we're pointing that will be the playing field. Yeah that's the bushes. That's it is, the that's the playing field. Of course, the there's a, field. I'm thinking that's the marina, this of course it's not. Solent, it's yeah. not, there's the, um, the outline there of the playing field in front of us. And this will be um, over towards Port Chester Castle. Yeah, that's, yeah, I guess that's the area. Yeah, and this is everything that's Trafandle. behind us, which is all the residential houses, the, the cinema. Yeah. <laughs> the David Lloyd Leisure Centre. You're doing well, to, you're doing well to pick that out. Yeah, <laughs> you're doing well to avoid it as well. <laughs> okay. um, but um, but of course, look, we can see there's, um, there's a red light as well, so not to damage our night vision if we want to look at charts um, doing here. But it does, at a flick of a switch, it does change to a normal white light as well, Perfect. which is quite nice. Um, we've got your main VHF head unit is up here and of course you've seen the um, the other one up at the helm and then we've got a Fusion um, MS UD750 now the 750 um, has your usual Fusion bits and pieces like Bluetooth and um, you can use the app with it um, but also this one has a built-in um, holder for your telephone which is a USB point you can plug a, a phone or an iPod or something straight in there um, to use and iPod old fashioned. I was about now. to say, you're showing your age there. iPod, they don't make them anymore. But it, uh, <laughs> or an old iPhone. Do you know, have you said that? I've got an iPod at home and I've got all loads of music on it, and actually, I do use it on a boat. Um, so, although you can't buy them anymore, they're still useful. So, it's, it's a fair point, Jonathan. Yeah, yeah. I'll let you off with that one. Oh, thank you. Thanks for that. <laughs> um, and of course, we've got um, other gauges on here. So, we've actually got um, um, there's two fuel tanks fitted to this boat, um, and they're of two sizes as well. So, um, let's just dig out the um, owner's manual. Might as well talk about the sizes of tanks while we're here. Um, so you've got two fuel tanks, there's two water tanks and it has a holding tank as well. So um, it's probably easier to, is there that one there? That's like a really in-depth owner's manual, so it's a bit easier to find stuff this one. So the fuel tanks, um, there's two, one's 160 litres and one is 250 litres because we've got two tanks. And of course, not forgetting that we're running the diesel heating, we're running the oven as well, as well as the 127 horsepower engine. So there's lots and lots of capacity there. Um, so you've, in fact, you've got what, 410 litres in total of fuel um, on board. And um, the waste tank's got an 80 litre holding tank. And then we've got two water tanks, um, 160 litres and 88 litres. So we've got 248 litres of um, fresh water as well we can hold. Um, so good, and we can read them all up here. So we've got two fresh waters, holding tank, and then two fuels. Okay. Uh, and your normal array of 12 volt switches, and then an array of 240 volts. And um, we've got 240 volts showing on here, and then we've got 13.3 showing on the house battery. And um, we've also got a, another switch here for the mains. Um, it's, it's on to shore at the moment, but it is set up with a generator and an inverter switches, although there isn't a generator or an inverter fitted but it is set up for that. So if you ever were to fit them, then um, 
you're looking at me like there might be an inverter fitted. I don't know. No? Oh, no. okay, yeah. So as far as we know, there's definitely no generator, but there might not be an inverter either, but it is set up for switches on that. In fact, I did switch it to inverter and nothing happened, so I'm assuming that's probably the case. <laughs> All right, but lovely. Um, obviously, a normal place to put your um, charts, but yeah, other than that, it's a nice little space. Okay, so if I swing the camera around now, we'll just show you the um, really the, the living space. Um, there's not a lot to talk about around here, apart from the fact that it is a beautiful place to be um, and a beautiful place to spend time. Um, part down here you'd comfortably get 10 people sat around um, sitting in this area and um, this area here obviously you you always end up with people um, around the kitchen area so this is where the galley step up here um, nice table um, just lovely feeling of spaciousness on board this boat I like the second city yep yeah, so if I come back over here towards the chart table across at Jonathan you can see um, really nice space here and just lots and lots of light to so say we've got these these windows are covered up at the moment we're in sort of winter mode with the boat but you can see that light would really stream through here you've got speakers down here underneath the um, the seats so you've got a speaker down there and another speaker on this side and um, they've got their own little rug here which which is nice and just cozies up the boat a little bit but as you can see Jonathan very very comfortable there good headroom good amount of space and just drawing attention again to these lovely steps they're quite a feature in this um, boat if we if we move forward into this position here and look back again you can see it's got a really lovely quality feel yeah. and these steps are really a little touch of modern design actually in this boat they, they look really really smart I just noticed as well there's storage under the table as well so I guess for drinks bottles and um, maybe some glasses yeah very nice. Quite a nice feature um, but of course we've looked at one cabin there's two more isn't there there's two more so two, two more, more cabins keep going this forward corridor. okay let's right. head down this way what should we do there we look at the small one yep. first. yeah so small one first a little heater in here just keeping things warm but i'll stick me to stick your nose in there which is a twin bunk um interesting enough on the light in here we've got these these covers um, are on the um, each of these hatches is on a cover. But if you open that up, something I did last week when looking at this, side, you can see just how much light streams through here and how much lighter this room is now once that is open. So you can see two good sized bunk beds here. Um, the, there's very good width actually on that bottom bunk it narrows so I suggest your feet would be down this end and then this bunk on the top here probably suitable for a, for a smaller child on there um, but two good sized bunk beds um, easy to get access to and then you've got locker space um, in here you've got a little worktop on here you can always put a mirror perhaps on that wall as an addition um, and then you've got more storage space in here another fire extinguisher down here so this cabin is, is yeah, very very nicely appointed it's not huge but there's plenty of space here for I would suggest a, a two-child cabin I'll just close the hatch down again so as you head back out into the the corridor space um, Jonathan once again demonstrating another bed you yeah, enjoy doing this. the front now yes um, so although I think I'm the wrong way round because the reading lights are up that end ah, true so yes yeah, it's kind of a foot end isn't it <laughs> I think it might be and I've obviously got my uh, body in a bag here <laughs> demonstrating the other side of the bed what is that in there that's a sail that's the before sail i suspect the four the four yes yeah, no four sail isn't it? so we think that's the four sail and maybe not a body but um but as you can see this is set up for one long person this side and then someone maybe five foot that side i'm glad you do the laying down bit because you ever want to see my ball patch if i'm the one laying down so it's, it's a good job you do this yeah probably <laughs> so again nicely massive, massive i love this this is huge 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 um space there um skylight there you've also got uh, storage space throughout you've got his and hers reading lights on each side um very very nicely appointed loads, boats. loads and loads of cupboard loads space of storage. storage drawers all the way under here see if I'd, I'd probably you know this is a good storage area if, if you're only a couple yeah You'd use the main cabin, wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. And you'd and keep obviously all the bunk room's quite good for storage as well, but it's putting all your stuff in these cupboards. You can keep stuff away, and it's easy to get stuff in and out of here. Yeah, it's really nice. And I like all the brushed stainless steel um, door um, switches here. Same down there. And then there's heating outlet there as well. So each of the rooms has got its own heating outlet. And in case you're thinking there's just the one heads on the boat, of course there is not. There's another one in here. 
um, another very nicely um, appointed um, room and this one has a completely separate shower cubicle so you can see in here uh, you've got a seat to sit down in um, or you could stand in there so it's got a, its own self-contained shower cubicle just in there if I start off on the bottom there and look up mm -hmm. And then more storage space here, quite a clever design here. You've got a mirror which is recessed and then you've got a little shelf in front of it. And more storage space in here, um, quite a nice modern uh, soap dispenser and toothbrush holders there in grey. Um, and if I then spin this all the way around, you can see um, another toilet here and again more storage space throughout. Storage really is a, a, a good name of the game in this boat. There's a space for a, a towel at the top there and another hatch up there um, for ventilation and allow more natural light to come in. So this room is not particularly enormous. It's quite narrow, um, but you do have good height here. So you can see me standing up here. You've got a good level of height there. And I shall come back out of there. I'm gonna leave Jonathan faffing around in there because I think he seems a little bit preoccupied faffing. in there. There's an element of faffing. <laughs> so I've come back now into um, this, this this seating area. I'm just going to spin the camera around and have a little chat with you guys. So we were first approached to to sell this boat a couple of weeks ago. Um, we've had a good chance to spend some time on the boat. Thanks for that, Jonathan. <laughs> we've had a good chance to have a good look around the boat and um, the more time we spend on the boat the more we love it um, it really is a place that I would feel very comfortable doing uh, blue water cruising going across the channel taking the boat down to the med and really using this boat to explore um, the quality of the fit out is fantastic um, of course do remember what you're buying with this boat although it's a 1998 first laid up hull um, the the actual fit out on the boat was really done between 2018 and 2019 so all all of the woodwork, uh, all of the instrumentation, um, everything the boat feels and down below looks like a new boat. If I, if you'd said this boat was on, if I just sort of pan around again now, if you said to someone that this boat was used at the Southampton Boat Show recently as a as a brand new show boat, um, you'd believe them. Uh, down below, the boat really is in in beautiful condition. Um, the hull has recently been anti-fouled, um, and the hull has also just been polished, so the hull is looking really really nice. Um, and yeah, overall, I'd say there's a lot to love about this boat. Um, in fact, one thing we haven't done, I just remember, is we haven't shown the engine access. Yeah, yeah better do that. So if we just move for, um, back here now, um, the engine access brilliant. on this boat is absolutely brilliant. Um, so you've got two ways of accessing the engine. If we look at the um, the first one here, is the first one that you come to if you just need sort of general maintenance side access uh, to the engine. You just lift out that um, hatch there and here we have engine access. So Jonathan over to you talk us yeah. through a little bit about the engine. I'm just gonna double check is, the, is that engine yeah so oh we see see that see see when I said the engine yeah you know up on that because we all wrote a bit um, 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 I read it off a bit of paper and I thought seven or eight that's, that's not an engine no, that's, a 4 LH is an engine okay and this is a 4 LH that's a 4 LH so, so it was a 4 cylinder so it's a 4 LH so it's a Yamaha 4 LH HTE 127 horsepower so it's turbocharged okay okay so a little turbocharged unit completely mechanical um, completely bulletproof brilliant engine and it's fantastic you know that this has basically been mothballed for so many years it's like an as a new engine you can see i mean even the turbo is still shiny it's in lovely condition and completely analog so again there's no electronics involved if the um if you turn the batteries off it'll carry on running if you have a short circuit it'll carry on running as long as it was running in the first place um, absolutely bulletproof engine and um easy access to the fuel filter and we can see the um, bowl at the bottom is lovely and clear very clean condition um, this has been used this year like i say it's done 60 hours since um, it hit the water and um, um but all very nice condition um but this isn't the only engine actually because you want to think well what if i want to get to the back of the engine well we open up the other hatch which is massive so let's, this is the small one and the, the engineer side of you is getting quite excited about this access isn't it yeah, yeah. yeah well, it is because that's the worst <laughs> thing when you're trying to work on it look at this we need the size of me look at that i love this <laughs> never seen such a big engine access hatch on a boat of this size um, but this then gives you 
full access to look everything in here. So we've so, so what we've got. Talk, talk us through what you're looking at. Well, let's here, start the think. engine. So okay. we've got, as you can see, um, the engine is in great shape. We've got this lovely, still new looking coupling goes all the way through to the um, shaft seal at the back, um, and then we've got obviously water inlet. So we've got a few seacocks here. A lot of them are deck drains. A lot of the deck draining system is in here as well. So it's easy access to all that. Um, and um, in here there's some other things as well. So you've got your hot water tank, which is a big hot water tank on there. Mm -hmm. um, and um, this is the, there's two exhaust water locks and mufflers fitted to the engine to keep everything nice and quiet. But as you can see, it goes through a double system. And um, this is to really raise the exhaust water above the height of the water line. So it has to go into here and then up into here and then down. So is it, this stops like the anti, it's like an anti siphon effect from the exhaust and um, stops it backing up as well. Um, but um, but yeah, all in all, it's a really good space in here. Obviously, a nice light. There's a battery charger here. There's even a shelf on the top here where the battery charger is. And, um, and then we can actually we can see that we've got two and um, we can actually decide which fuel tank we want to run off of so we can switch tanks as well if we need to so effectively we've got a um, 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 we can use one or other tank you've also it's quite nice to see in here you've got 240 um, power here so in the winter uh, if you want to put a little radiator in this area that's nice and easy to do that so yeah, nice nice engine space easy access to everything yeah, I think Actually, that, one as we can see. and in fact now you mention it again that that water tank is huge uh, i think the size yeah. of a water tank on a normal sort of 40 footer is about you know quite a small tw maybe 20 liter um, that's enormous yeah that was, yeah but uh but even access to like the water strainer um for the engine for the seaweed trap that's really easy access and nice little, you don't need tools that are just nice little finger holds to to undo it with Nice. So yeah, nice, lovely condition. Okay, thanks for showing that, Jonathan. So I think before we before we realised that there was a, a slight omission to our video that we hadn't run through the engine uh, section, I was just talking about um, just really how, how I feel about this boat. Um, it has got a beautiful feel. It's the sort of boat that I'd love to spend time um, extended cruising on. Um, the space, if I just again spin the camera around, um, the space that you have aboard is really, really substantial. Um, and I think it is the sort of place that you'd want to spend a long amount of time. If you just, a weekend wouldn't be long enough, I don't think, on this boat. You'd go away for the weekend and feel that you you should just nip across the channel you yeah, wanted to go no, a little absolutely. bit further yeah yeah no absolutely and um and i don't did you did you mention andrew that you know th don't forget this boat was laid up in 98 um but this was um and this was re marked so it's had a new rcd design category put onto it um, the boat identification number has been updated and it's got a new ce marking classification so it has a brand new hull number effectively now not the 98 one which it came with originally which was stamped on the hull but it's been redone as a 2018 boat so effectively the whole fit out has been done to a 2018 standard so all the ce ratings it's all been ce rated to from to 2018 and approved for that so this is where this boat is very unusual because it's a nine effectively you could say it's a 98 boat but it's but it's been everything's been done since around the 2018 mark when it first hit the water and so it's been classified and we've got obviously all the paperwork and the proof that this was done um, and by CE Pro themselves which um, reclassify a lot of boats and, um, and so effectively it has a 2018 whole number now and we have an um, excellent providence on the boat in terms of looking back at seeing um, ownership history um, so when the hull was first laid up in 1998 um, it's changed hands a couple of times where people have obviously intended to to finish the hull but not got round to it uh, but then finally um, the person that bought the boat in 19 in 2016 um, then went forward and did the fit out and effectively it had a three-year fit out um, yeah. done at Hamble Point Marina on the south coast um, by a real expert fit it out um, before the boat then first touched the water. Yeah, I mean, it's not as if it was done by the owner. Like, no, no, absolutely. Yeah, you know, we've got every invoice, everything that's been done on this to a new standard as some as these professional companies would fit out a new boat anyway. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so effectively, it's a new it's a new fit out, um, and then 
um, the, the hull was reclassified, the CE marked, updated to now being a 2018 boat and everything was done for that, that, that standard. Absolutely. So I think that probably pretty much concludes our, our video today. Um, we've covered everything in pretty comprehensive detail. Um, of course, there's nothing like viewing a boat. Um, the boat is um, is here at Port Solent Marina on the south coast. Um, if you want to arrange a viewing, um, then please get in touch with us at Parker Adams. Um, we'll be delighted to show you the boat. The boat's currently on hand, hard stand at Port Solent. Um, but of course, if you um, did want to put in an offer that was accepted on the boat um, and take the boat out for a sea trial, um, then it would be a pleasure to do that we can get the boat put back in um, and ready to go pretty much straight away as I mentioned earlier in the video the hull's been polished the underneath has been anti-fouled um, if somebody wanted to buy this boat and put her back in the water I think she could be afloat again in literally a couple of days there are no jobs that would stop this boat being on the water um, and going sailing straight away so thanks so much for watching uh, this YouTube video uh, we hope you found it useful please remember to like and subscribe to the channel um, thanks to Jonathan for, um, for ably demonstrating many areas my pleasure um, and we very much look forward to seeing you on the next video so thanks again for watching um, of course if you do have a boat that you're thinking of selling as well um, please do get in touch with us we give all boats that we sell this treatment we hope you've enjoyed it um, and look forward to seeing you on the next video thanks so much all the best bye